Hi everyone. So today we're going to spend some time looking at the properties of 2D shapes. So properties, that means um, the things that are important, the things that tell us a shape is what it is. Okay, so I'm going to start down here. Um, these aren't in a very logical order. My printer um, wasn't being very kind to me and it's just mixed them all up. But this one down here, straight away we know is a square. I know we don't have any issues with the shape, but it's properties, okay? And these are what's important that we need to know about. A square has got four right angles, okay? And it has also got four equal sides. So they're kind of indicated by one line that shows that they're all the same side, all the same length, okay? So that's a square. We should be happy with that. Um, you do need to know these properties particularly about the equal sides because often you'll be told about um, a shape which has got four right angles and four equal sides and they won't tell you it's a square okay so um, once you once you know it's a square you'll be able to continue with the question so we need to be quite happy with those parts um, I'm going to go this way now I'm going to come along to this one here um, this is a check this is a rhombus so I've got a very similar one on the next page okay a rhombus funny spelling it's got a H after the R. It's quite a cool word. Rhombus. So a rhombus has got two sets of parallel lines. Okay, so a little arrow indicates it's parallel. So these are both parallel with each other. Okay, that means they're never going to meet. They'll go on like train tracks. Um, and these are also parallel to each other. Okay, they're not parallel to these ones. Of course, they cross here. But uh, they are parallel to each other. So these two sides, okay, they are never going to meet. Um, we also have some matching angles here. So these two angles are the same. So I'm just going to pop an A and an A. And these two angles are the same. And I'll call those both B. Okay, call them anything you want. But th because they've got the same letter, we know that they've got to always be the same number as well. And the last thing about a rhombus, and this is really important, um, and it's what separates it from a parallelogram, which is what you might have thought it was initially, is that all the sides are the same length. Okay, so one, two three, four, okay, those sides are all the same length, because a rhombus is essentially a square, which has been squashed a little bit, okay, that's what's happened here, so a rhombus is kind of related to a square, okay, please take notes on these in your book, um, just do some sketches, now I'm going to go on to my next piece of paper, because there's two sheets, two um, shapes on there, which relate to these ones, so I want to do those first, so we've got here a rectangle, okay which is very similar to a square in that a square is a type of rectangle it's just a very special type of rectangle a rectangle has got four right angles let's just see write that on rectangle four right angles it's got two sets of parallel sides so these are parallel and these are parallel okay and it has got two equal sides here these are the same length and two equal sides here okay now that's how it differs from the square let's just bring the square back here because with a square oh i didn't even put the parallel sides on but i'm hoping you can spot those we've got a pair here and a pair here okay um but yes on a square all the sides are the same length on a rectangle we've got one pair the same length and another pair a different length that's the only difference between a square and a rectangle. It's just been stretched out a bit. Okay. Right then. Um, down to this one here then, the parallelogram. Please be careful with the spelling. Um, parallel. It's a horrible spelling. And I'm never convinced I've got it right. And um, the more you look at it, the more you start to doubt yourself. So if you find a, um, a comment in the um, upload of this video with the correct spelling, um, apologies in advance. I think it's about right. Um, so, parallelogram is to a rectangle what a rhombus is to a square, okay? So, the rhombus is a slightly squashed square, the parallelogram is a slightly squashed rectangle, okay? So, it's going to have very, very similar properties. We're going to have a pair of parallel lines here, okay? A pair of parallel lines here. We're going to have two sides the same length here and two sides the same length here. The only difference is the angles. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've got, and this is similar to the rhombus here, we're going to get two angles the same here, 
and two angles the same here okay right then so that's those two and they're all nice because they kind of come in pairs so those two to come together and these ones come together right next one along then a triangle triangle so i know you're fairly familiar with triangles by now and especially with all the work that we've done on pythagoras but let's just make sure we're happy with the properties so this is an equilateral triangle okay so that means all the angles are the same now because we know the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees i have got another video on that if you aren't sure why that is just have a look at that first but they all add up to 180 degrees and because in an equilateral let me write that out equal equal lateral um we have equilateral so they all have to be the same so that tells us that they must all be 60 degrees so in an equilateral triangle the angles are always 60 degrees because 180 divided by one two three is 60 okay and they have to be the same um also an equilateral triangle one two three the sides are all the same length as well okay it's a really nice triangle it's nice and neat i do like that one now i haven't actually printed out um i thought to lose triangle i apologize let me do a sketch of one now so an isosceles triangle i think i might change my mind i think isosceles is actually my favorite so it's a little bit more interesting than an equilateral okay so isosceles triangle we always see them like this they always look this way up okay and in practice questions in real life and in exams they don't very often look this way up so we'll have a look at some in a different style in a moment but this is an isosceles another strange spelling isosceles okay and um, again we've got 180 degrees in total but this time we've got two angles at the base which are equal okay so i'm going to call them a and a the third one is is not related to these so we can always calculate it if we know one of these um also we've got two matching sides okay they're always the same length now don't forget an isosceles triangle doesn't always have the base there it could be that you're presented with one this way around okay so your a and a are here don't dive in and assume that they're here okay just be really careful with that and then your matching sides would be here now the last triangle well the last out of the three there is a right triangle as well actually um is a scaling triangle which is one which basically just doesn't follow any rules okay so scaling triangle has got one two three different lengths okay they're not the same and if we had two we'd suddenly have an isosceles if we had two that were the same and we've got three a b c three different angles okay so scaling is basically the if all else fails triangle okay if it doesn't fit into any of the other brackets um, and that last one that i just mentioned was a right triangle a right triangle and that is a triangle which has got a right angle okay so a triangle with a right angle is the is your right triangle <coughs> excuse me right then so that's triangles um pretty interesting stuff actually and triangles are really popular in exams because we can use them for pythagoras we can use them for angles we can use them for trigonometry and um, they just come into so many different topics so they do usually come up quite often so worth knowing this stuff with those right then so back down here i'm hoping someone can what this is even though it's sideways we normally see it this way it's a kite okay this is a kite one of the lesser talked about shapes but certainly important to know about all the same um, a kite has got two sets of equal length lines okay it doesn't have any parallel lines but it does have these two sets of equal length and it does have one set of matching angles okay so i mean the, the, it has got like a line of symmetry down the middle here which would help to see but yes we, we quite often get presented because think of like a kite that you would fly in, in the park or something that's kind of that traditional shape isn't it okay so there's your kite and the last one and i say the last one because it really is just one shape okay and um, we've got let me write it up here trapezium trapezium 
Um, Americans do call that a trapezoid. So if you're looking this up online, don't worry, it's the same shape. Okay, it's not something different. So trapezium, now we're used to seeing them like this, and it always reminds me of in really old pictures of really old fashioned circuses where they'd have um, this kind of podium shape where there would be, I don't know, like an elephant or something on there. Um, it always reminds me of that. And then I think of a trapeze artist and get the name trapezium. So whatever helps you remember the name of it. So this shape is actually called an isosceles trapezium because it does relate to the isosceles triangle in that it's got this kind of line of symmetry down the middle. And we've got two matching angles here, two matching side lengths, and actually two matching angles up here. Okay, it's an isosceles trapezium. I'm going to pop that up there. Now, don't be too concerned about knowing it's called an isosceles trapezium, guys, um, but it's important you know that there's a different type, which I'm going to come to in a minute, because we're so used to seeing this style. Okay, so this is an isosceles. We've got one set of parallel lines here. Okay, these aren't parallel. Um, this is also a trapezium. Okay, this is also a trapezium. A trapezium has got one set of parallel lines. It's a quadrilateral. That's a four-sided shape, remember, with one set of parallel lines. That makes it a trapezium. So that's what we've got here. OK, even though these aren't kind of symmetrical, don't worry, they're not parallel still. At some point up here, they're going to meet, aren't they? They're going to cross those two lines. So we've got one set of parallel lines. And um, this one's actually got two right angles. It doesn't even need to have two right angles. You could just have, I'm just going to draw on top of this, a little bit less of a, less of a slant there. OK, but it's still a trapezium. Um, there's not much else to notice about this one because it's not isosceles. Um, it's quadrilateral, so the angles sum up to 360 degrees, which you should know if any, any quadrilateral is the case. Um, but yeah, as long as there's only one set of parallel lines, that is a trapezium. And I've done another video on calculating the area of a trapezium as well, which is quite interesting. And it looks at this again, these two different styles. OK, so really worth having a look at that. Please, please make sure you've taken notes on those um, because, as I've said before, in exams, they don't always tell you the name of the shape you're working with. They'll give you some information about it. And if you can't figure out what shape they're talking about, then you can't even start the question. So it'd be a real pity um, to miss out on a question you could actually answer had you been able to do that little bit. Thanks, folks.